Good morning and welcome to Deepwater Baptist Church Online. Tis the season to be jolly and tis the season to wear a tea towel on your head for the school Christmas nativity play. Well, sadly this year there aren't any school nativity plays. And it's been a year, hasn't it, when it's been difficult to find joy too. But you know, we often associate the shepherds with joy in the Christmas story. But the life of a first century shepherd was anything but joy. Shepherds were not very highly thought of in the first century. They were considered one of the lowest classes of people. In the Old Testament, many of the notable people were shepherds. So people like Abraham, Moses, and of course, David were all shepherds. But by the time you get to the first century, shepherds were not so highly thought of. Shepherds were considered ceremonially unclean. Because of the nature of their work, they were unable to attend religious services. They were isolated and forgotten quite often because their flocks needed to move from place to place to find new pastures. Shepherds were treated with content and mistrust. They were often suspected of stealing from other people and they were considered to be loud and foul-mouthed and ready to fight anybody. Shepherds were not trusted, they were not very popular and in actual fact there was a law saying that the testimony of a shepherd was not valid in court so they were never allowed to be a witness. So the life of a shepherd was pretty miserable. Hard work for not much pay, poor living conditions and nobody really liked them. But on the night that Jesus was born, for a group of shepherds just outside Bethlehem, their gloomy night was to turn into a night of joy. These ordinary shepherds were going about their business, tending their sheep at night, when suddenly they had a visit from an angel. Angels are God's messengers, and this angel had a very special message for these shepherds. Luke tells us this. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a saviour has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to those on whom his favour rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. I wonder how you'd feel if you got a visit from an angel in the night. Luke tells us the shepherds were terrified but I guess it would be quite frightening to see an angel suddenly appear in the darkness of the night. But perhaps these shepherds had reason to be terrified. Remember, they were not popular shepherds in those days. So maybe God was bringing judgment on them for the things they'd stolen. Or perhaps he'd heard their crude jokes and their conversations during the night. Or maybe their past had finally caught up with them. What did this angel want? with this group of shepherds. But the angel said to them, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. This was the amazing news that God's son had come into the world. But how amazing is it that the first people that were told the good news were a group of shepherds? Now, most parents are excited when their children are born. Most parents want to tell the whole world about the birth of their child. But usually parents have a priority list of people that they need to tell first. Now you'd have thought that the almighty or powerful God would, would want to tell kings and queens or maybe world leaders 
or perhaps the religious leaders in the temple. Those would be the top of the list, surely. But the top of God's priority list were ordinary shepherds, the outcasts, the marginalised, the underdogs. When you think about it, it's very fitting, isn't it? That God should choose to tell an ordinary group of shepherds first the news about the birth of his son. See, Jesus in his adult life always had a heart for the underdog. He embraced the outcast, he befriended sinners. Often he was criticised for it. On one occasion, Jesus was at a banquet with a large group of tax collectors and the Pharisees and the teachers of the law complained to his disciples. They said, why do you eat with tax collectors and sinners? And Jesus answered them, he said, it's not the healthy who need a doctor, it's the sick. And I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. One of the things that people often say to me is that they don't feel good enough to be a Christian or they don't feel good enough to come to church. And if you feel like that, then there's good news for you. Jesus came for you. Notice that the angel said to the shepherds, I bring you good news of great joy. A saviour has been born to you. You don't have to wait until you're perfect to come to God. In fact, you never will be. So just come as you are, because Jesus came for you just as you are. And no matter who you are, whether you feel close to God or far away, whether you live in luxury or in poverty, Jesus came for you. Listen again to what the angel said to the shepherds. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. I think the best way to understand that phrase, all the people, is all the people, everyone, everywhere, no matter what your race, colour, gender, age or whatever, this news of great joy is for you. So the question is, how will you respond? Luke tells us how the shepherds responded to this news. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off to Bethlehem and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherd said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. So the shepherd's response was that they hurried to see Jesus. And when they'd seen him, they told everyone about him and they gave glory and praise to God. You see, the shepherds had learnt what the real secret of joy is. Joy doesn't come from money or possessions or even your circumstances. They were still poor, smelly shepherds. But the real joy is knowing the assurance of God's love for you. You see, God offers you the best Christmas present this Christmas. The best Christmas present you could ever hope for. Christmas is Jesus offered to you. You see, God gave his best for you because he is joyous over you. He is jubilant over you. In fact, he's just obsessed with you. You are God's joy. He would do anything for you. And that's why he gave everything for you. You are his joy and he wants you to know real joy this Christmas. Joy that only he can give. Jesus is open to you. So how do you get this joy? Well, there's a verse at the end of the Bible that I really love. It comes from Revelation chapter 3 and verse 20. It's the words of Jesus saying, Here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with that person and they with me. It's an invitation from Jesus, standing at the door of your heart, knocking. 
So all you've got to do to experience this joy is let him in. So if you want to know real joy this Christmas, then just open yourself to Jesus and you'll find real joy. What will your response be to this good news this Christmas? Will this be the gift that's left under the tree again this year? Or will this be the year that you unwrap God's gift to you and accept the gift of Jesus, God's greatest gift to you? So as you can end this difficult year with good news and great joy. May God bless you all. Amen.